Okay, hello everybody. Uh, my name is Jan. I'm the creator of the UVRF. And in this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to create a new project and configure it to be used with UVRF. So first of all, uh, start a new engine and basically create a new blank project. I'll just select games and blank. That's correct. And here, just uh, for convenience, make sure that you don't have starter content. And I'll name my project something like UVRF demo and create it. Uh, now we'll wait for a new engine to load the sample project. It will take just a while. And that's it. Okay, the first thing we are going to need to do is to copy the plugins here. So I'll just open to UVRF2 folder. Go to plugins. Uh, here you can see the three plugins. Uh, I'll just go one folder back and copy it from here. So plugins. Copy. And go to UVRF demo and paste it here. And now we can run the project again. So it's still quite fast. And let's check if the plugins are actually loaded. So go here, scroll all the way down to project other, and there you can see UVRF, which is the core plugin. Then there is UVRF Oculus, which uh, takes input from the Oculus library, and then there is UVRF Steam VR. The reason uh, why it's two plugins instead of just one is that when you, for instance, are compiling for SteamVR and don't want uh, native Oculus, you can just disable it. Or when you want to publish on Oculus Store, they don't want SteamVR Steam VR libraries in it. So when you disable SteamVR, you can disable this and uh, everything's working without any errors. So that's the reason for it. Okay, so right now I will need to create a new level. So I'll just uh, save the current level, make it called demo level. And it's here. And the next thing we need to do is to set up a game mode. And so just uh, go and edit project settings once again. Uh, go to maps and mounts and here you can select the default game mode to UVRF game mode. Later you will probably want to create your own game mode with your own logic. And while I'm here, I'll also set the startup map to demo and game default map to demo just to save time later. So right now, when I hit uh, VR preview, uh, it should start to be working. I should be seeing something. So let me just grab my index, my controller, and you can see there's a hand. The hand is looking a bit strange right now because it's not self-occluding, which we are going to fix in a moment. So let's do it. You'll need to go to project settings again. And this time we need to go to the rendering tab. And here we are going to need to set two things. First is uh, the instant stereo, which can be found under VR. So just click this. It will ask you to restart the engine, which we will do in a moment. Basically, instant stereo uh, is rendering uh, or processing the geometry for just once instead of twice for each eye. And it's something you want to uh, check every time you're making a VR project because the performance savings are huge. So uh, make sure to check this even if you're not using UVRF. And second, we need to enable custom, uh, custom depth with stencil. And I'm wondering where it is. Uh, custom depth stencil pass here in post-processing and basically set it to enable with stencil. So these are the two things, and now we can restart the engine to Okay, we are restarted, and well, let's give it a try once again. And I think that we will see that the hand is now fixed. You, you can see that it's self-occluding, that the more distant fingers are not, not visible when they are occluded. So, so this is working just nicely. And let's move on. Second thing you need to do is uh, that you need to set up a lot of uh, input actions. So probably the best thing uh, to do it, and I'll just, just cheat a bit here, 
uh, is to once again go to the UVRF2 folder and here go to config and just grab the default input uh, configuration settings, uh, copy it and uh, paste it in your project. So don't, uh, don't move the SteamVR bindings or the SteamVR UE editor. That will cause crash because it's for another application. So uh, you cannot copy that, but you can copy the any files. So let's just go here into the config, paste it here. And as you can see, it already has the SteamVR binding. So if you would replace it with something from other applications, it's, it's co going to cause a crash. So. Now if I will start the UVR demo once again and check if the, if the actions are imported correctly. So go to project settings once again, this time go to the input tab and you can see that there's a bunch of uh, action mapping and access mappings, which is good. So we all need to regenerate the SteamVR files. So just navigate all the way down if you're using SteamVR and click the regenerate and uh, action manifest and controller bindings. Now those imported uh, imported configuration uh, is uh, is written into the JSON files from SteamVR, so it's going to work. So right now, if I would have any objects in this scene, I would be able to grab them, but we will be covering that in a later tutorial. So probably the next thing, uh, let's see if the input is working by setting up movement. So in, in UVRF, uh, there's some movement type that you can be moving either by teleport or by smooth movement or with or not moving at all, which is the default. So if I want to move, I need to uh, set the movement to one of the types. So I'll just get player pawn here. Uh, I'm doing it in, in the level. Uh, cast it to VR pawn. I'll call here the set movement type and here I can basically uh, basically sh uh, decide what what kind of movement mode do I want so teleport is obvious you're teleporting then there's free with net turn so when you move your thumbstick uh, you just instantly turn uh, 24 degrees and then there is free with smooth turn with smooth turnings. It depends on your application what you want to do, which settings you are going to be using. So let's give it a try once again if it's working. And let's see. I should be able to move around and I am able to move around. Okay. So that's one thing that we have fixed. However, the next thing uh, we are going to do, if I would go once again into level blueprint and set it to teleport, you will notice that teleport is not working. So even if I hit play and I'll just uh, activate the teleport with pressing the thumbstick to be right, you, you, you can see it cannot find any, any objects. This is because the UVRF is using the Unreal Engine NAFMESH to know where you can teleport or move uh, and we don't have enough mesh setup so I'll just go here go show and show navigation so that we will be able to basically see if it's working go to play sectors and just write in enough mesh bounds uh, okay it seems that I'm not able to write even yeah enough mesh bounds volume you want this and let's make it a bit bigger so, okay, I'm still in work, work settings, so no wonder I cannot find anything useful here. So, okay, maybe I'll just leave it like this. And, and you can see here that the green area I have uh, is where I'm able to teleport. It's not one-on-one uh, -on, -one on the on the free movement, but right now uh, if, I, if I will hit play, the teleport should be working. So let's give it a try. And okay, as you can see, I'll just point here, the button will appear and I can do it over here and I can move using teleport right now. So now we have all the methods of movement covered and there's one more thing that you need to do. 
uh, that, that we'll be playing her later when you're playing with grabs is uh, basically set up a highlight module so, so that when you hover over something that can be grabbed, uh, it will just be highlighted. So I'll, there's no way to actually do this globally. So uh, you need to add post process volume into the each le into each level. So I'll just place it here. Check it uh, somewhere here. It should say infinite extent. Okay, so I'll just ch check this so that it spans basically the entire level. And here you can see the post process materials. So just go in, add a new one, choose a set reference, and then there is a highlight material. So this material will uh, will take care of the of the highlight when needed. And that's basically it for the for the setup. Now you can uh, jump to the next tutorial and learn something about grabs or about our uh, UI features. But there's one more thing I'd like to talk about a bit because there's a lot of functionality in the VR porn that we have. Oh, by the way, maybe I should mention uh, when you go to view options, make sure that you have uh, show plugin content ticked so that you can see those uh, those plugins over here normally you don't see them and uh, so now i can navigate into into uvrf so uh, so uh, back to what i was wanted to say if you look at vr pan there's a ton of ton of different functionality uh, that is handling the uvrf point of it so but I'm sure if you are making a game or training application or whatever application you have in mind, that you will sooner or later need to create more functionalities for the pawn. And basically modifying this one is not a good idea because when we release a new version of UVRF, then you need to track, keep track of all your changes. So what we are doing internally on our projects is that we simply create a new pawn like blueprint glass and here make the VR pawn its parent. So I'll just call it demo pawn. And right now, uh, as long as I'm calling the parent uh, functions on begin play and on tick, I can start making my own functions or add whatever new functionality uh, into pawn I want here, but still leave the original VR pawn intact. So that's one of the things I think is a good practice to work with UVRF and of course uh, right now to be using the demo pawn we would need to create a game mode so I'll just create a new game, game mode base I'll call it demo GM and in this game mode I'll just switch the default pawn class to the demo pawn and right now I'll we once again need to set this in, in the project settings. So let's go quickly to map and modes, set it to demo GM. And right now uh, we are using the demo pawn instead of the original one. So just to see if it's working, I'll just delete this. And go to the demo pawn and on begin play, I'll just go set movement time and let's say I want free movement with snap terms so I'll just call it here and if I did everything correctly it will be working so let's see moment of truth okay and now you can see I have snap terms so it's turns for 45 degrees every time I press the thumbstick so Okay, you maybe cannot see it, but so it's working. And uh, now that you have your own pawn, you can uh, add whatever functions you need here. So that's one of the things to keep in mind. Okay, uh, I guess that's it for this video. Next videos, uh, I'm going to talk about the different grab systems we have in UVRF. So be be sure to check check that out and. I hope that uh, you will create something great with UVRF. So, see you next time.